from everyone tonight. I'll go along with Brett as we say that, and we certainly want to keep everybody in our prayer, especially Zach. We are always talking about being concerned about this, that, or the other. Some things, of course, are far more important than others. But I want us to draw a lesson from the book of Ruth tonight. And so I'm calling this lesson the only concern we should have. The only concern we should have. When we turn in the Old Testament to the book of Ruth, we have an account of how a very critical link in the lineage from Abraham to Christ uh, came into existence. We know that Ruth gave birth to Obed, who became the father of Jesse, who, of course, was the father of David, Ruth 4 and verse 17. However, this is much more than just a genealogical record. I think that's one of the reasons it's more than four verses, it's four chapters. The recorded events of Ruth's life have a great lesson for us, and it deals with the answer to what is the only concern we should have. Now, Ruth, as you remember, was from Moab. She was a Moabitess. Naomi and her husband had left Israel and gone to Moab. And their two sons had married Moabitess maids. And uh, Ruth is the one that decided after the death of her husband and then, of course, the other woman's husband, son of Ruth, had died. She decided she would uh, stay with Naomi. Both uh, women, that is, Naomi and Ruth, having lost their husbands, and in that day and time, were going to end up in sort of dire straits. But we see the first thing is that following Naomi, Ruth goes with her back to Israel. So she remains loyal to Naomi. And she works to support her. And she maintains a very humble attitude throughout all of this. And I would emphasize that point when you're reading the book of Ruth is to note the disposition of Ruth. It's amazing. These were not easy times for them. And uh, widows at that time, if they didn't have family, were on hard times pretty quickly. Well, to make a long story a little bit shorter, and this message won't be too long, Ruth marries Boaz and of course she becomes the great grandmother of King David according to Ruth 4 13 through 17 now notice this didn't happen because she was an overly ambitious person that's the reason I said as you read through Ruth note her attitude her outlook on herself inwardly and outwardly on her association with others. Because she is consistently and humbly and quietly just doing what was right. Now notice that the next time you read this, and maybe if you're if you haven't got particular Bible reading you're thinking of, then just read the four chapters of Ruth. And there are other things there, of course, keep in mind, but just note the character of Ruth. Now, here's the reason I want to focus on this. We sometimes wonder what great thing we can do 
that will have an effect on the future or while we're living. And of course, we think about doing good, a great thing that would do good, usually to a whole lot of people or something like that. Many people think that way. But you know, often it's not the great thing, put that great in quotes. It's not the great thing that will accomplish that. Instead, it's a lifetime of what people might call small things. Doing what is right for the right reason in all situations. Now think about the Christian life and what it means to be faithful. Think about what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 58 of being steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The Lord himself taught in his earthly ministry that, and there's a song that we sing sometimes along that line, if you give a cup of water to somebody who needs it in his name, there's a reward for you in that. So it seems to me that a lot of people who are great aren't great necessarily because they do great things. And then we have to ask the question, in God's sight of our conduct, what is a great thing? And after all these years, I think I can safely say from Scripture and experience, a great thing is doing what is right all the time. All of that measures up and accumulates. And that's how you have a life of faithful service to God. I don't know the way you do it. So we need to do only what's right. Now, I want you to keep that in mind because when we get here in a moment, going on into our study of 1 John, there's a whole lot of said about being righteous by John. We don't know how our actions will affect the future, but we can definitely have a positive impact. And other people may not necessarily notice little things, but if they're right things, then they make all the difference there is. So we may not accomplish what many people consider to be great things, but here's something every one of us can do according to our several abilities. We can accomplish right things. Now, of course, right is determined by what the Bible teaches. The Lord's will revealed in the words of the New Testament. That's how we learn about what's right. And we go about doing good, and we define good, even as the New Testament defines good, and that would be right things. But that also brings us back to another very familiar verse, Colossians 3.17. Whatsoever you do, in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, Give me thanks to God the Father through him. Well, the right thing then is doing what the Lord wants us to do. In every instance, in every case. Well, that's a challenge, isn't it? Maybe very small things. Maybe just a word here or something there. And as far as man's concerned, it may be very small and insignificant. But as far as God is concerned, who is omniscient, knows everything, even the very hairs of our head are numbered, and not a sparrow falls that he doesn't know. Then he takes note. Seems to me that would be one of the great uplifting things to keep people from being depressed. A lot of folks are depressed to one extent or the other. But when you set about to do right, no matter how small it may be and insignificant from some people's perspective. That's the greatest thing anybody can do is do right because God notices it. He notices everything done. So the only concern we should have is to do right. 
in everything, under every circumstance, situation, and let the Bible define the right. And let us imbibe it, fill ourselves with it, be governed by it, judge all things in the light thereof, and we'll be on the safe course. So I hope this has helped us, and we hope these things will motivate us all each day to do right. Thank you.